Well, we've got, got something one. interesting. This comes from the October 15th, 2015 wa watch. I hear a mosquito buzzing. You see him? Ah, uh, did you get him? Yeah. Oh, that's him, that's him, that's him, and that's him. Ew. Mosquitoes all over you. Hey, now, that was a clean shirt when I put this on. We've got an interesting article this evening. Thank you to everyone who sent me emails and messages and said you've got to check out the October Watchtower that just came out. They're bashing apostates again. Well, even though they don't mention apostates by name specifically, um, this is written in a way that, in my opinion, it appears again that it's damage control. Yeah. Um, again, it comes from the Watchtower October 15th, 2015, and it's entitled... The naive person believes every word. I've got to, I've got to ask again. A hey, knuckleheads, the monkeys at the typewriters, do you not even stop to think what you're writing? I mean, the naive person believes every word. You, you've got your district conventions going on all summer long, and the naive, stupid Jehovah Witness is sitting in the audience believing every word that you publish. And we're going to show something in a little bit later during this video just to show how naive Jehovah's Witnesses are. So really, when they're writing this article, they they are in a very re real, re reverse way, uh, slamming Jehovah's Witnesses. Yeah, because the ones sitting in the audience of the Kingdom Hall and these conventions, they're the ones that are naive if they do not go to the internet and check and, out these yeah. reports and stuff. So, for instance, it starts right off, and we're going to show you how Watchtower has taken this out of context. Again. Again. Okay, they have a quote from August von Schulzer, the German historian and publicist. He lived from 1735 to 1809, and this is what he was quoted as saying, and Watchtower uses it. Foolish is the man who never reads a newspaper. Even more foolish is the man who believes what he reads just because it's in the newspaper. That's like no, an oxymoron. Yeah. Well, what <laughs> what prompted August von Schulzer to make this comment? Well, let's go check the source. So we found the quote in a book called An Almanac of Contemporary Judicial Restatements, Administration of Justice. Now, wait a minute. Judicial Restatement. So this guy made this comment. It had something to do with the law. Yeah. Court cases. So we found okay. it on page four oh seven in chapter eleven, and he is on line fifteen fifty one, and the quote, the quote is correct. The quote's correct. But now let's put it into context. What does the next line item say? What's interesting, it says, despite the respectability attached to newspapers, <laughs> they are not public documents. And it's like, okay, well, what has this got to do, you know, with anything? Within the meaning, uh, thus, where a copy of a newspaper to show a change of name was attached as an exhibit. And then they're mentioning court documents here. And... By looking at the definition of public documents, the copy of a newspaper was not accepted as that which comes under admissibility allowed under, you know, this statute. And then when you go down to the footnotes, you know, it says the same thing that, you know, a newspaper could not be used as evidence as public documents in a court of law because of the nature of the evidence. Right, so now it really appears that this August von Schulzer was making this statement during a court proceeding because somebody was probably trying to use a newspaper article at that time 
for legal documentation to prosecute somebody. Well, down in the footnotes here, you know, it says it was held that a newspaper report is not generally admissible as evidence of the fact recorded in it because they are no more than news items. So they're not evidence in a court of law. So, you know... So Watchtower uses this quote to, to, uh, to equate it with a person being naive. So read this first paragraph well, here. That, that's yeah, the interesting this, well, part. Well, this is what follows. If a person could not trust everything that was written in a newspaper over 200 years ago, the same applies to much of what can be read on the internet in the 21st century. So do you see how Watchtower has taken this quote out of context and tried to make it apply today? Well, here, here, here this is, here's something that you can quote me on, Watchtower. You don't have to read this in a public newspaper or in a public forum. I'm telling you right face to face, you people are so freaking ignorant and stupid to think that you can get away with this because today, if a newspaper has maliciously printed something, they're gonna get their asses sued. There's a thing called liable. So for you to take a quote 200 years ago and try to make it apply today, you guys, you guys are out of your league. That's all I got to say. Well, it's funny because I've actually had discussions with current Jehovah's Witnesses and many in the XGW community have told me that they have tried to talk to their friends and family members and they mentioned these court documents that are available on these child abuse cases and the witness will actually say that is apostate propaganda. Like apostates can actually go into court files. Yeah, and make which, this shit up. Which are legal documents and change them. But see, that's how naive Jehovah's Witnesses are. See, your manipulation watchtower is working very, very, very well. Because you've got 8 million people around the world that have got their heads so far up your butts that they're that naive to think that your shit smells good. That's as simple as that. So And that it's truth. Yeah, it, well, that's what I mean. It smells so good. It, it's truthful. Okay, now, they go on a little bit more. Next paragraph. How can we become shrewd and identify hoaxes, urban legends, swindles, and other misinformation that may appear on our computer screens. First, ask yourself, is the item from an official, reliable website or from a blog or an unknown source? Well, let's just do a little bit of um, exploring Jehovah's Witnesses. Are we ready to show them? Well, we're going to show this and we're going to show that. Now, keep in mind, is it from a reliable source? It's your it's, source. It's your source. It's, it, it, it's your source, Watchtower. That's Go, what's so hilarious. Yeah, Jehovah's Witnesses, get your reasoning book. Now, you shouldn't be afraid of this because this is, this is a reliable source. Go to page 89 under the cross. Why do Watchtower publications show Jesus on a stake with hands over his head instead on, on, uh, on and, let's see, instead of on the traditional cross. I'm getting all worked up, you know. I know, he's this fired kind of up. This crap just irritates the hell out of me because it's just plain stupidity, okay? So Jehovah's Witnesses, go to openlibrary.org. You can download the Imperial Bible Dictionary. Get this quote and fill in the dot, dot, dots. And you will see that the reliable source manufactured an absolute lie. And don't don't take my word for it because see Jehovah's Witnesses this article is for you the naive person they're talking to you because you're you're so naive that you won't even take the opportunity to go and confirm what I'm saying oh this is just apostate propaganda I'm giving you the source so it can't be a prop apostate propaganda because the source is your own reliable information. And that is what did it for us. Exactly. We were no longer naive. We checked it out. We checked it out. Okay. And if they lied about this, what else did they lie about? 
So yeah, go ahead and do do that one. Then I'll do the other one. The harp of God. This was a reliable source. Uh, absolutely. You know, if you did Rutherford not believe, Rutherford himself wrote it, right? Yeah. If you yep. did not believe what was in here in 1921, then you were an, an apostate. This yep. was a reliable source. So I'm going to show you, share some of this reliable source with you. I don't want to get too excited no. here and rip my book. It's very delicate. I know it. Okay. So on page 228. Under the chapter, Our Lord's Return. Okay, now Jehovah's Witnesses, this was a reliable source. This is not on the internet. This is the actual book printed by your organization. So it's reliable, yeah. Watchtower. In paragraph 394, about halfway down, they quote Daniel 12, 8 through 10. And this is when they're talking about the King of the North and the King of the South. It says, the Lord has caused Daniel to record specifically what would happen when the time of the end should begin. The time of the end means a specific period at the end of Gentile dominion. So we're going to go down to paragraph 395. The fulfillment of this prophecy fixes the beginning of the time of the end. Okay, the beginning of the time of the end because the prophecy definitely so states the campaign of the great warrior <laughs> Napoleon Bonaparte is clearly a fulfillment of this prophecy <laughs> as reference to the historical facts concerning his campaign plainly show. Do you see how naive Jehovah's Witnesses are? Were under Rutherford's reign? Nothing's changed today. Yes. So when is this time of the end? All Jehovah's Witnesses nowadays say it was 1914 and that the Bible students knew it was 1914 from the very beginning. Uh, 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 uh. So paragraph 400. There are two important dates here that we must not confuse, but clearly differentiate, namely the beginning of the time of the end and of the presence of the Lord. Now pay close attention, Jehovah's Witnesses, because this is your reliable That's right. source. This is reliable. The time of the end embraces a period from AD 1799. <laughs> I kid you not. It's, 1799. It doesn't say 1940. But see, according to one of their other propaganda pieces of bull crap, the Bible students always believed it was 1914. Why? The time of the end embraces a period from A.D. 1799 as above indicated to the time of the complete overthrow of Satan's empire and the establishment of the kingdom of the Messiah. The time of the Lord's second presence dates from 1874. <laughs> Again, no mention in 1914. Well, they also say the Lord's second presence. Right, yeah. See, this is how naive you are, Jehovah's Witnesses. Oh, but wait a minute. I can just hear some, some Jehovah Witness now leaving a comment below this video and saying, Oh, but, but, but Mike, you, you stupid apostate, you. That's old light. That's, you know, we don't... This is your spiritual heritage. Do those words connect with your cognitive dissidence? This is your spiritual heritage, Jehovah's Witnesses. Get around that. <laughs> see? This is, this is your heritage. It's built on bullshit. Yeah. See, and the thing is, is we're going to get more in this, but they talk about a reliable source. Yeah. When we do it's videos. It's more information. Yeah, I was going to say, when we do videos, it's your own information. Yeah. <laughs> it's your own literature. It's yeah. your own articles. Okay, so now let's go on. It is more to rant, trust me. Kimmy's Royal too. If a news item seems unbelievable, it probably is. <laughs> it probably is. Furthermore, when the information discredits others, think about who benefit from such news being spread and whether the sources has ulterior motives in spreading it. Well, I'll tell you right now, Watchtower, I have an ulterior motive in spreading your bullshit and exposing it for what it is. 
because it's damaging lives. You're hurting people. You're you're Breaking ruining up families. families. Your your policies are protecting pedophiles. When you've got when you've got um, John Walsh doing programs that's trying to run down an ex Jehovah Witness elder for molesting kids. You're goddamn right it's going to get exposed because you're hurting people. Because you've got all your people so naive to think that your crap doesn't stink when it does stink to high heaven. And it's evil. Yeah. Okay, now. So that is our ulterior that's motive. That's our ulterior motive. And then to help those that do wake up from being naive and realizing what they've been involved with is pure the pure essence of evil is what you are, Watchtower. And another motive we have is trying to educate the public so yeah. that they don't get involved in this cult and, you know, have to go through the heartache and the grieving that all of us have. Yeah, we we just got an email today from a person. I'm not going to give all the details, but he he's never been a Jehovah Witness. He's working with a Jehovah Witness woman who's a very lovely person. And he's waking her up. You know why? Because he's educating himself about your BS, Watchtower. The tables are turning. When the world is educating themselves about your propaganda bullshit and using it to wake up your members, you're done. Okay? Is that why you're grabbing as much money as you can now? Because you know your days are numbered. Meeny, meeny, tekel, parson. The handwriting's on the wall, Watchtower. <laughs> All right, let's go on compulsive forwarders oh that's me oh yeah oh yeah some often okay some often in search of attention are fixated on being the first to spread news and forward it to all their contacts without checking its authenticity or considering the consequences hey watchtower I have considered the consequences trust me in my heart of hearts I know what the consequences are I've lost my family. I've lost my friends. I know what the consequences are, but I go ahead anyways. Our daughter has lost her grandmothers. Yeah, exactly. So Watchtower, we know what the consequences are. Except this are. right here is a lie. It's not for attention. No, it's not. It's to educate people. It's education. Exactly. Now, it goes on. However, if we are shrewd, now here comes, here comes um, the mind control technique it's written right here however if we are shrewd we will think about the possible damage this could cause perhaps to the reputation of a person or an organization there it well, is there's the mind control oh if i send this email this is going to ruin the watchtower organization reputation that's written mind control because that sinks into the mind of a jehovah witness and it's like oh 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 no, I don't want to ruin Watchtower's reputation. Well, look, I better not let them know about Campos. Well, look at back in October of 2012 on my Facebook. All I did was put a link um, to one of those mystery shows Mysteries. that I like. Yep. And it was about an elder who killed his present wife to go back to his first wife. Yeah. And the first thing, you know, all the witnesses on my Facebook is, why would you post something negative like that about the organization? There's the mind control. There it is. So you can't I deny know it. firsthand that this tactic, cult tactic, works. Yeah. So now they go on. The next page, they have some cute little rhymes. Instead of thinking, if in doubt, send it out. It would be better to adopt the motive. If in doubt, throw it out. Oh, that's real cute, Watchtower. I could sit here and do rhymes all the time. I could come up with these little cute phrases that mean absolutely nothing unless you're naive and you're under mind control. See, that's how these little cute things work. If in doubt, throw it out. If in doubt, work it out. Jehovah's Witnesses, if you're having doubts, work out why are you having doubts. Have you heard something that Kim and I have said or any other person doing um, videos exposing Watchtower for who and what they are? If you've got doubts, 
check it out. I'll, I'll give you one. I'll give you one. I'm not even going to tell you what this is about. Okay? Here's one of your songbooks. Notice the black guy and the black woman. Okay? Notice that. Okay? This was published in uh, 2009. Here, here's the back cover, just so that you'll know. Sing praises to Jehovah. A reliable source. A reliable source. There's the, there's the back cover. Why did Jehovah, uh, yeah, why did Jehovah's organization have to change the black person? Why? If in doubt, check it out. Find out why that was changed. I'm not going to give you that because I've already, I've, I've, you should have been paying attention because I've already given you that. But check it out. If in doubt, check it out. Don't throw it out. That's what mind control propaganda wants you to do. Throw it out. Okay, ask yourself, have I become a compulsive forwarder of emails? There again, there's, there's the other mind control because they, they are attaching compulsive behavior disorder to forwarding an email. Well, that fits in with the bite model because this is behavior control. Exactly. This is behavior control. Okay. Have I ever had to write my contacts to apologize for having sent them information that turned out to be incorrect or an outright lie? <laughs> the cross. That's an outright lie. Go ahead. Send it out. You won't have to make any apologies for that. Okay, let's go on. I've got, oh, this is just, this, I've actually looked at this and studied this better than I did my own watchtower when I was a fully indoctrinated JW. My goodness. Yep. Okay, uh, going on, it says, um, uh, they do not need to be inundated with funny stories, video clips, or slideshows. It is also unwise. Now, here comes discipline from Jehovah. Behavior control. Yeah, this is behavior control. It is also unwise to forward recordings or transcripts of Bible talks. Oh, so now you can't even pass to a current Jehovah Witness some Bible talk pre-1974 when the, when the person given the talk said, we believe the end was coming in 1975 because I went out and I bought a $500 pot and pan set thinking I'd never have to pay that money back. Oh, no, no. See, you're not supposed to send those Bible talks out no more because it actually convicts Jehovah's Witnesses for the stupidity and how naive they were back then. Well, look at Freddie Franz's 1975 talk. Exactly. Funeral. Yeah. They totally want that to disappear. Yeah. Okay, furthermore, forwarding research material versus extracted for Bible study or answers to use at congregations meeting would detract from the value of each individual's personal preparation. So you can't even send research material now. No, you can't. You No, you can't. Yeah. Exactly. Well, I don't know if we mentioned this in another video or not, but we know of a brother that made a comment during a watchtower study, and he brought in an article from something else in his comment, and the con conductor yep. publicly chastised him and asked him not to bring in any more outside information. And what's interesting is I was talking, I think it was to Unknown Apostate about this, and he said... Well, there is information about that, but it's not for the audience to bring in extra material. It's for the conductor not to bring in any extra material into the watchtower study. Right. So he took conductor. that out of context. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Okay, next paragraph. And what should you do if a slanderous news, or if you find slanderous news about Jehovah's organization on the Internet? Well, we've already heard a talk. Just hit delete. Just hit delete. You know, we, we've already done that one. See, just yeah. hit delete. Such material should be firmly rejected. Some feel that they must bring it to the attention of others to get their opinion. But all that does is propagate the malicious information. 
So don't send them the damage new control. talks. <laughs> yeah, it's don't send them the new Caleb video. You know, with the little ghost. Green yeah. ghost things because that's malicious. So what Watchtower is saying here, Jehovah's Witnesses, is sit down, shut up, and live quietly in that little bubble that you're in. Continue to be naive because this is who Watchtower is addressing here. You are naive. You live in a bubble. When Watchtower says such material should be firmly rejected, do you want to know the truth or not? I mean, you people go from door to door saying that you have the truth, but when the truth is put before you, what do you do? Firmly reject it. What? How does this type of ignorance even live in the 21st century? Oh, I know, because Watchtower is propagating it. God. Okay, if you feel troubled about something we see on the Internet, this gets really righteous. We should ask Jehovah for wisdom and speak to mature brothers about it. Okay, problem number one, we tried to speak to mature brothers about subliminal images, and what happened? We got our asses booted out of the organization. Well, there's several that want yeah, have they, they, honest questions that they want the elders to ask, and boom, they're hauled in for a judicial hearing. And the, yeah, and, and then... When they can't answer that question, it's like, well, here, here's the old failsafe. We'll learn to rely on Jehovah. Okay, you should ask Jehovah for wisdom. All right, Jehovah's Witnesses, you really need to do your research. Watchtower has already put in their reliable source, mind you. The Watchtower is the reliable source. They have already published two Watchtowers where Watchtower has confirmed conclusively that they know the name Jehovah is a Catholic invented name. So, pre, so you know, since that name is invented, then why don't you just pray to Ramalama Ding Dong? Because you're going to get the same results as praying to Jehovah. Your prayers are not going to get answered, especially when your reliable source of Watchtower admits that the name Jehovah is nothing but a Catholic convention. Ram oh, I can just see it now. Oh, Ramalama Ding Dong. I don't know whether this I'm information I see on the internet is truthful. Oh, Ramalama Ding Dong, please, please seen, show me the truth. I've seen the June broadcast, and they're saying that they don't know what the true pronunciation of your great holy name is. So please help me. I'm having doubts about even the name Jehovah. Yeah, old Rama Lama Ding Dong. But if please you go talk to an prayers. elder about those doubts about the name Jehovah, guess what? You're Back out. Back room. Yeah, that's exactly right. Okay. We need to use thinking ability. That's right, Jehovah's Witnesses. Use Wake your up. thinking ability. That's right. That's good. Wake up. Okay. And discernment to identify the man speaking perverse things and those whose entire course is devious. Okay, Jehovah's talking Witnesses, again. They, they're absolutely talking about themselves. Do you want to see how devious Watchtower is? Do you want to see who's speaking perverse things? Watch this clip. And for me, I always knew that uh, Jehovah expected me as the head of the family to take the lead, to step up and take the lead when it came to the discipline and mental regulating of Jehovah. But when I realized that this time the discipline was coming from Jehovah himself, I had to not step up, but I had to step back and loyally follow Jehovah in the way that he was running this discipline. And this is what helped me to understand my role in the situation. Now, did you hear what this man, this brother said? I had to step back and realize that this was discipline from Jehovah. Okay, your thinking ability in your Bible knowledge should come up with this. That Jehovah's discipline is non-negotiable. Adam and Eve, what was the sentence? Death. Was that negotiable? No. When Moses started playing wipeout on that little flinty rock, you know, and, you know, all that water came out and he took all the credit for himself, what was the discipline? 
he couldn't enter into the promised land. Was that negotiable? Did you ever read where Moses tried to negotiate with Jehovah? Hey, this punishment is too much. I, I want to be in that uh, promised land. No, it was non-negotiable. When David sinned with Bathsheba, the child paid the price for that sin and that murder, an eye for an eye and a tooth for tooth. Was that negotiable? Absolutely not. Sodom and Gomorrah, was that negotiable? Oh, I can hear a Jehovah Witness right now saying, but didn't Abraham negotiate with Jehovah? No, 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 no. See, you're missing the point. The judgment wasn't against Abraham. The judgment was against Sodom and Gomorrah. The it was non-negotiable. Prophecies against Jerusalem's destruction in 587, 588, and again in 607. Was that not, uh, was that negotiable? 70. Seven, yeah, 70 CE. Not 607. Yeah, 70, right. <laughs> I'm riled. Okay. He's riled. Ananias and Sapphira. Was that negotiable? That was instantaneous. No. When Nebu and even Nebuchadnezzar, when he was punished for his arrogance, he was to be like a beast in the field for seven years. Was that negotiable? Now, why have I said this term negotiable many, many, many times? Here again, remember what the man said. I had to step back and realize this was discipline from Jehovah. Jehovah's discipline, Jehovah's Witnesses, is non-negotiable. So, here's the contradiction. Can this system negotiate with God that they can go on longer instead of being destroyed in Armageddon? It's not negotiable. Okay, so I want to thank the unknown apostate because he is the one that is like, oh my God. Yeah. God. Sweetie, brilliant. This Absolutely is a very brilliant. good point. If this is discipline from Jehovah that their son was disfellowshipped, then why is there an, an appeal process in the organization? Now, do you understand, Jehovah's Witnesses, that an appeal process is something that is negotiable? So now, now they're saying you can negotiate Jehovah's discipline. Okay. Now, what's interesting is, like I said, the unknown apostate, he found this in the flock book. Now, this is the new flock book and, um, you know, the secret elders book. Yeah, you know, the ones that the rank and file aren't supposed yeah. to have. Oh, that's a moth. thought it was another mosquito. On page 107, now, all of us know that when you are informed that you are going to be disfellowshipped, you have seven days to appeal this. Appeal Jehovah's decision. In writing. Yeah. And they will pick another appeal committee. It's ridiculous. You know, another committee. And usually, you know, it's in a different area. Okay? Now, what they don't tell you and what a lot don't know, because I didn't know until I read this no. in the elders book, that there, there's actually a <laughs> second appeal. Yeah, so you here's your first appeal and your second appeal. Yeah. Now, this is what it says, like I said, on page 107, paragraph 14 about the appeal, the second appeal. When the disfellowshipping is upheld, there is no further arrangement for appeal. However, if an individual persists in believing a serious error in judgment has occurred, <laughs> the appeal committee should inform him... <laughs> <coughs> the appeal committee should inform him that he may submit his allegations in writing to the appeal committee within seven days for transmittal to the transmittal to the branch office. The appeal committee should not mention this provision unless the individual indicates that he believes a serious error in judgment has occurred. Now, how many Jehovah's Witnesses know that there is a second appeal you available? You can appeal it twice. Now, let me, let me understand this. You get hauled into the back room with three loving, caring elders, and you have graciously accepted their summons, I mean, their, their invitation to this judicial hearing, and then the brothers say, well, let's pray and get Jehovah's direction. Oh, Jehovah, we come before you now. Um, we, we request your spirit to be present with us. 
Um, there has been serious, serious sins committed. Um, you know, w we don't know. We might guess it was fornication. Well, hell, it might even be adultery. Or, you know, Jehovah, this guy may have even, may have even tried to smoke a joint. Um, but, but, but Jehovah, please, please have your spirit so that we can make a good and proper and sound judgment. Okay? Now, you prayed for Jehovah's Spirit, and the decision comes down, you're going to get disfellowshipped. Now, you prayed for Jehovah's Spirit, Jehovah's Spirit guided these three idiots to make the decision to disfellowship you, and now they tell you seven days you can appeal Jehovah's decision? How naive is that, Jehovah's Witnesses? I mean, you, you people are the most naive people on the face of this earth. So how is this discipline from Jehovah? If you can appeal it. If you can appeal it. It's not. It's discipline from a corporation, from a legal status. That's why they have this appeal decision, because it's a corporation. It has nothing to do with God. Figure it out. It's not difficult when you start processing it. When you start reading this flock book, you actually start seeing the corporate legalese that is in it. And it's to protect the corporation. It has nothing to do with God and mercy in the Bible. No. It's, got all, it's all got to do with the corporate legalese is what it's all about. But my heart is just, oh, this kind I'm sure of, your blood pressure is... Oh, man, is... I'm telling you, I'm ready for another aneurysm. All right, let's see. I've got some more highlighted here. Um, I think we... Oh, oh, okay, here we go. Above all, love refuses to believe malevolent insin insinuations about Jehovah's organization or lies about brothers that are circulated by people who are slaves to the father of the lie, Satan the devil. Well, there's a direct slam to apostates. They're talking about us again. Oh, yeah. You know, I mean... What really, did we do? Really, <laughs> really, this that sentence just falls short of, again, calling us mentally diseased. Okay? Thinking ability and discernment will help us to become shrewd and consider how to handle responsibly the increasing amount of information available to us on a daily basis. As the Bible says, quoting from Proverbs 14, 18, the naive will inherit foolishness, but the shrewd are crowned with knowledge. And you know what, Watchtower? You people have inherited, in, inherited foolishness because everything you say and do is being expo exposed as absolute foolishness. And you know who's being crowned with knowledge? Those that escape your clutches. Because like you said right here, Jehovah's organization or lies about our brothers that are circulated by people who are slaves to the father of the lie. You manufacture one lie from your reliable source, even about the cross. You manufactured a lie about the cross. You have now become a slave to your father, Satan the devil. It's not us that have aligned themselves with Satan. It's you. You have done it. Okay? And I love how they say love refuses to believe these things. So basically they're saying that witnesses, if you believe any of you know what, what saying, you see, yeah. then you don't love Jehovah's organization. Yeah. Wow. Well, it's like the Bible Emotional says. Emotional control. Yeah, it's like the Bible says. There are people that will like and love and carry on the lie. And that's exactly what Jehovah's Witnesses are doing because they're too stinking naive to think for themselves. They, they, they let Watchtower tell them how and what to think. But now, questions to ask yourself before you hit send. Is this information from a reliable source? Hey, this is your own source. This is your spiritual heritage. This is your reference material. This is your source, Watchtower. You are destroying yourselves is what you're doing. 
Well, that's why we had the spy versus spy, you know, little cartoon yeah. thing at the beginning. Because that's Watchtower's vault. And we go and open it up, and it's just a flood of information coming out of there. And it's their own information. Well, what a lot of people don't realize about spy versus spy, it's the same character. It's just a different color, black or white. And they're both out to do in each other. <laughs> It's it's the same character, just a different color. Watchtower, you're naive. Your people are naive, but you're trying to paint a different color to the world. But it's you that you're destroying. You're you're your worst own enemy. Okay, the next question is this information confidential? Well, up until now, the Jehovah's Witnesses didn't realize that you can go and appeal your judicial committee um, decision on two occasions. See? But yet, secret it's information. secret information. So it's Watchtower that's hiding the confidential information because they want to keep Jehovah's Witnesses naive. You know why? Because the minute Jehovah's Witnesses wake up, the cash stops flowing. See, that tit's going to go dry, isn't it, Watchtower? Will this information damage someone's reputation? You're goddamn right, Watchtower. It'll ruin your reputation because that's what's happening. Your reputation is being ruined. When people in the world, worldly people as you so affectionately call them, when they're studying your propaganda, when they're watching apostates videos and they're... They're not just taking our word for it. They're, Trust me. They're looking it up. They're researching it. And they're seeing exactly who and what you are, Watchtower. And then they're taking that information and they're waking up your captives. So, See? yeah, it's damaging to your reputation. To your reputation. You know, when people see news items that, you know, on America's Most Wanted or some program like that, they're looking for some, some Jehovah w Witness who's been raping and molesting kids it ruins your reputation because the world is now thinking hey I don't want these people knocking on my door on a Saturday morning think about it if you're not a Jehovah Witness why would you ever want them people knocking on your door saying hey have you heard the good news yeah the good news is is that guy knocking on your door chances are he's probably a pedophile or an elder hiding a pedophile God, this is just so I ridiculous. But I did, how, how those <laughs> idiots, how those monkeys at the typewriter can sit there. I mean, do, do, I, I, I'm addressing you writers specifically right now. Do you guys lay awake at night and, and think this stuff up? Because this is so freaking ridiculous. The naive person believes every word. But you don't comprehend that the Jehovah Witness believes every word you print, even from the days of Rutherford. The end began in 1799. Christ's second appearance was in 1874. And yet, Jehovah's Witness, the Bible students back there, naively believed every word Rutherford wrote. You people are foolish. Well, now... Talk about the, the ten foolish virgins. The current witnesses are believing that from the very beginning it was 1914. Yeah. It's just absolutely, utterly ridiculous how naive Jehovah's Witnesses are. Because Watchtower makes you that way. Quit reading that stupid magazine, Watchtower and Awake, and you will begin to get your cognitive dissidents back. You will begin to comprehend what's taking place. Take the six months challenge. Quit reading that piece of garbage watchtower for six months. Go out and buy you a Bible where Jesus' words are printed in red. And then figure out what Jesus said. And then put that side by side to what watchtower says. And then you'll realize how misled you've become. How naive you actually are. How naive for 42 years I was. Well, I want to mention, um, he goes by the uh, 
poster name of Charles Russell. Yeah. And we were talking to him last night. Hi, sweetie. It was great talking to you. And he was sitting at the more meetings, bored out of his skull. And whenever they would read a verse, he would read above it and below it. And he's like, oh, my God, they're taking these verses out of context. And that's what woke him up. Yeah. You know, and he's, you know, trying to talk to family members and stuff. And it's like, just read, you know, when they do a verse, read above and below to see what it's really talking about. Yeah. Do you want to see Jehovah's Witnesses how naive Watchtower keeps you? Okay. This whole impending Armageddon. In the world of Jehovah's Witnesses, whose judgment is it? This is Jehovah's judgment against the world. Really? John <laughs> chapter 5, verse 22. For the Father, a.k.a. Jehovah. Now remember, this is Jesus speaking. And this is coming from your New World Translation. John chapter 5, 22. For the Father judges no one at all but has committed all the judging to the Son. Now, go back and think about that, that man on the stage. He said, I had, to, I had to step back and realize that this was discipline from Jehovah. This was Jehovah's judgment. But yet, John 5 contradicts what was said on that public watchtower platform. The Father judges no one at all, but has committed all the judging to the Son in order that all may honor the Son. See? All may honor the Son just as they honor the Father. He that does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. Most truly I say to you, he that hears my word and believes him that sent me has everlasting life. And he does not come into judgment, but has passed over from death to life. Did you comprehend that, Jehovah's Witnesses? See, you sit there and say, Oh, Jehovah, may I prove worthy on your great and in, in fear-inspiring day because I, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that I'm worthy enough to live in this paradise earth. Oh, Jehovah, please judge me righteously. Your prayers are directed not with absolute firmness of heart or mind. It's with this, I hope I survive. I hope I survive. Man, I tell you, it would sure be nice if I could live forever. Your conviction is not there regarding Judgment Day if you think that way because you don't know what the Scripture says. Most truly I say to you, he that hears my word and believes him that has sent me has everlasting life. He doesn't say the hope of everlasting life has everlasting life. And he does not come into judgment. That's why I don't fear Armageddon, Jehovah's Witnesses, because I have Christ. I don't have that fear any longer. I'm not concerned if I'm worthy enough. You know why? Because I know I'm worthy enough. And that's what separates people that are naive and people that have absolute conviction. Figure it out. It's not that difficult anymore, Jehovah's Witnesses. You just have to learn to realize that your faithful and discreet slave, your governing body, is, is the evil slave. Because they're destroying your relationship with Christ. And you're, so, you're too naive to figure it out for yourself. Yep. Blind leading the blind. Blind leading the blind, exactly. Yeah. So, thank wow. you for listening to our rant. We're going to get Mike some M&M's. I need another beer or something after this rant. Going to get him some M&M's and some nice cold beer to cool him down. <laughs> you know what? I'm, I'm just waiting for the day for a Watchtower writer to sit here and say, Hey, Mikey, I have an idea for a Watchtower article. Could you help me write that? I'll set the record straight once and for all. Jeez. These guys don't even stop and think about how they present this information and how it's going to look to the audience reading it. Jeez. 
Ignorance begets ignorance. Clownology. Yep, stupid is as stupid does. Well, thank you for listening to our rant, and you all have a great weekend. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.